Okay, I'm going to give you a little review on naming compounds. So one of the things for your test on Tuesday you're going to have to be familiar with is uh, what you have to have memorized. So you can kind of see over here, there's three different kinds of compounds. And for each one of these, there's something you have to have in your head really to be able to name them. So for ionic compounds, the major thing you need to remember are the charges. So you probably remember from the other day, we wrote the charges in on our periodic table. So you can see the charges here are um, plus one for the first column and plus two for the next column over. And then there were a few stragglers in this area, like these guys were like plus three, plus two, plus one, and then this column minus one, minus two, minus three. So hopefully you have those written down and hopefully you have them in your head. Now for the other things you need to know, the other things you need to know are um, for molecular compounds. Now for molecular compounds, those are where we use those prefixes. So for those, we're going to have to um, have those in our head as well. So you're supposed to know one, two, three, four, five, and six. So one is mono, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, and six is hexa. Okay. Now, for acids, acids is where you have to do the conversion thing. So, remember how this works. 8 becomes ick. It becomes us. And I'd becomes hydro ick. All right, now the other thing you have to have, I guess, hopefully goes without saying, is you have to know the symbols of these elements, right? So um, off your periodic table, you're supposed to know what these symbols are. So we're going to um, remember that we have to, uh, we have to um, know, um, I think it was 1 through 40 off your periodic table, and you have to know, uh, well, it's 1 through 38, and then 47 and 48. So make sure you know those as well. All right. So let's get to some examples and ask you to write the formulas. Now before we actually try these, let me just remind you that uh, there are really three kinds of compounds. So before I start, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to categorize these things. So to categorize them, um, I'm going to look at what I see in the name. And here I see cobalt. And cobalt is a metal. It's right here on your periodic table. So that's a metal. You know, anything to the left of this line here is a metal. And so if you got a metal, that means that this compound is ionic. Okay. My next one down. Again, I'm going to look and see what I see. And I see a metal again. I see aluminum. That's right here. And again, it's just to the left of our line. So that makes it as metal as well. So if you got a metal, that means you're ionic. All right, the next one, uh, it says acid, so I think that means it's an acid. And then the last one is a, another ionic compound. Again, I know that because I see a metal. All right, so for a metal, um, I think in this case I see titanium. And titanium is right here on your periodic table. That means it's a metal as well. All right, so off of this list, we've got three ionic compounds and we've got one acid. So there aren't any molecular compounds on this uh, page. Uh, molecular would be two nonmetals. All right, let's go ahead and get going on these then. So to do these, the first thing I'm going to do is if it's ionic, ionic is where you have to worry about charges again. So I'm going to be writing the symbol of the first thing, cobalt, which is CO. And if you see a Roman numeral, that's the charge, 1. Then I'm going to write the symbol of the second thing. Now it ends in ide. 
Ide means it's an element, an element with a minus charge. So nitrogen with a minus charge, it's right here. It's minus 3. So we're going to go ahead and write it down as well. Now I notice the charges don't balance, so it looks like to me we're going to need a couple more cobalts to get the pluses and minuses to balance. So putting it all together, there's one, two, three cobalts and one nitride. So if you put it all together, that would make it CO3N as your final answer. All right. Next one's also ionic, aluminum. So aluminum has a constant charge. It was one of our guys we're supposed to remember. It's right here. It's plus three. So let me write that down as well. And then it says sulfide. So for sulfide, sulfide is right underneath oxygen. It's in the minus two column. It's in the minus two column. So we'll put that down as well. Now, if you have a plus three and a minus two, the only way to get this to balance is to really get six of each. Six minuses, in other words, a couple more sulfurs. And then another aluminum. And then that would be balanced. Six minuses, six pluses. All right, putting that all together, you get Al2S3. All right, so the next one's an acid. For an acid, uh, what we're going to have to do is remember that conversion thing from the last slide. So this is actually, to be exact, an ic acid. Ic acids, ic goes with eight. That means it contains something with eight. So phosphoric acid contains phosphate. So this is where you're going to have to look on your polyatomic list. So on our polyatomic list down here, um, I know it's hard for you guys to see, but it's on there. It does tell you what phosphate is. And phosphate, it tells you, it's somewhere up in this top section, is um, PO4. So if it's PO4, it also will tell you it's minus 3. So remember, 8s and x are polyatomics. All right, so last thing we're going to do is we know that acids always start with H. So I'm also going to list H here, and again, I notice the charges don't balance. So to make it balance, I think I need um, a couple more hydrogens. Uh, minus three, plus one, yeah, a couple more hydrogens would get it to balance. So that means the formula should be H3PO4. All right, last one of these. Last one is again back to ionic. Ionic, you got charges. Ionic, you're going to write the symbol of the first thing, titanium. Another one we have to know, it's Ti. And if I see a Roman numeral, it's plus 2. That's telling me the charge. So if it's not an always and forever, you're going to get a Roman numeral. In this case, it's plus 2. Now this is a little bit of a weird one when I get to the second part of this name, hydroxide. Usually when something ends with "-ide", that means there's something off the periodic table. It's an element. Nitride was N. Sulfide was S. But there is one, uh, one exception to this, and that really is, well, there's actually a couple. But all the exceptions are down in this bottom corner. And that is, there are a few polyatomics that actually end in IDE. Usually IDE is an element, but not this time. Hydroxide is OH minus 1. It's a polyatomic. Now to get this to balance, we need another OH. So we're going to have to put that together. Uh, we got our two plus charges. We got our two minus charges. Now writing it all together, it should look like this. T 
I, and then OH. Now, since you have a polyatomic and you used a couple of them, this is where you put those parentheses and then the two on the outside. All right, so that's going from a name to a formula. All right, let's go on and let's do a couple where we're going backwards just to make sure we have this figured out. All right, so for going backwards, so we use the right method. So for this first one, I see something that starts with H. That's an acid. For the second one, I see a metal. A metal means it's ionic. For the third one, I see two nonmetals. So again, right, they're both in this top corner of the periodic table. They're both nonmetals. So if they're both nonmetals, that means this is molecular. And finally, our last one, I see a metal. Again, that means it's ionic. All right, so if you have a metal, those are ionic. If you start with H, you're an acid. If you have two non-metals, top right part of the PR table, you're molecular. All right, so we're going to do all these. Um, Maybe we'll do them in a little different order. So um, I think, you know, probably for a lot of people, the most straightforward one is the molecular. Because the molecular, this is where you do your dyes and tries. So I see phosphorus, but I see three of them. Tri, phosphorus, and then I see five oxygens. But the second one should be ending in ide, so that would be penta, meaning five oxides. Okay, now <clears throat> for our next uh, one we could do, uh, let's do the acid next. So the acid is where you do the conversion thing. So this is an element. An element ends in ide. So this is actually bromide. So bromide, ide, turns into, this is where you have to have that memorized thing, hot, bromide. Ide always turns into hydroic, so to be exact, it should be hydrobromic acid. All right, so we've done the acid, we've done the molecular, that means the last two are ionic, and the only thing that can mesh up on the ionic ones, really, is sometimes you need a Roman numeral, and sometimes you don't. So for the ionic ones, I think one of these needs a Roman numeral. And that is going to be number D. And the reason that's going to be number D is because copper is not an always and forever. Magnesium is an always and forever. It's always two. If it's always the same charge, don't use a Roman numeral. All right, so no Roman numeral here. So this makes this one a little easier to do. You just write the name of the metal. Magnesium. Write the name of the nonmetal fluoride. All right, the bottom one's going to be a little tougher. It's going to be a little tougher because we'll need a Roman numeral because it doesn't have a constant charge. So we'll write the name of the metal first, copper. We'll write the name of the nonmetal. Now you see a bunch of atoms. So if you see a bunch of atoms, that's a polyatomic. It's on your handout on your polyatomic list. It's phosphite. All right. And then we're going to get our charges to balance. So copper and phosphite. I'm going to list them the way I see them. So by the way, all these should be subscripts. Uh, this program won't really let me do subscripts very well, so that's why they may not look quite right to you. But it, this is trying to tell me there's three coppers and two phosphites. So to figure out the charge on the copper, you really got to worry about the charge on the phosphate first. Now on our polyatomic list, it tells me that charge. It's minus 3. Now I listed it twice because of that subscript there, that extra 2 I saw. So there's really 6 negatives. Hey, this is going to be balanced if the copper 
is plus 2. So that's what the Roman numeral is. It's plus 2. All right, with that, that's a little bit more example. So um, I'm going to post one other little file that's going to have some examples for you to try, and then uh, I'll go over them and see how you do on those. So hopefully this reminds you of all the things you got to remember, and um, um, look for that other movie to see if you can practice this so you're all set for your test.